Hello, hello guys. Yes, today I've got a talk with Now Ranger, and today we're just chatting about our journeys, our journeys from you know then until now. And I thought, I thought today would be like a good conversation to have with Now, just about like different perceptions within the journey and different mentality changes because someone like Now, even myself to a degree. Like, we've just had, like, an awkward journey to where we are today. And the way I kind of see it, it's like a... Not even to detract from anything we've done, but it's more like a kind of backward success story. And, yeah, I feel like loads of people in that sense, they don't get to understand these things there. So we're going to kick it off. And like, my yeah, wow. <laughs> What's good? good you? Yeah, man, I'm hey, good. Bro, man. You've been dealing with boy. I've been pandemic lifestyle, isn't it? Pandemic so you say lifestyle. no haircut and them things. Well, no haircut. I had to. I had to hide. <laughs> Mad thing. You look sorry. You look alright though. You're good, bro, man. You're alright. Yeah, but you're looking healthy as well, bro. Thank you, my brother, man. Thank you. Yes, fam. So, obviously, today, we're here to talk about the journey then and now. Mm. And I just wanted to start off by saying, how are you, bro? Like, how's, how's life been during this kind of weird period? Boy, this whole thing, 2020 has been a madness, bro. I can't even lie to you, bro. <laughs> from going from the, the whole racism thing to the corona mm. thing, the lockdown yeah. thing shut down everything even though like man was supposed to have trials and things like this it's all just shut down and it was tough already yeah. it's already been tough for me so i just got even tougher like so it's yeah. been hard bro but you just gotta keep obviously i'm strong in it so i just keep my mind strong bro you know what i mean personal experience yeah man it's been the same for me as well like it's so mad because i wanted to finish my novel by now and obviously we're planning to work together in some ways as well i wanted to just finish like a, a few things in it but real life kind of just hit had to kind mm. of like kick back and understand what's kind of worth it and yeah man it's just channeling 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 like a lot of energy in different different ways in it and yeah of i thought course. today would be a sick conversation to just point out that aspect of strength in it like the aspect of perseverance and i think the best way that we can do that is just by like highlighting our journey and different ways and i can already see in the comments people going Dude, like, man. <laughs> Dude, my brother <laughs> come on, bro yeah, yeah man. man when you're ready so, yeah, bro. Bro. like i think it'll be probably best to touch base on like where this all kind of started for you i remember we had some really interesting conversations about like your comment and your kind of vision and I remember yeah. saying to you, like, raw to me, this sounds like a success story in itself, especially, like, from where we're coming from, the situations that we've like, been involved in. Mm. Like, what people need to understand that there's also, like, different routes to success, different routes to understanding yourself as a person. Mm. And of so, course, yeah, where did it all start for you, now the now range of the baller? Boy, you know what? It started in my grandma's back garden, brother. Do you understand? Mm. Me and my cousins mm. just kicking ball, messing about. It's just, you know, like, when we call it Wembley, where, where one man goes and go. And obviously, man had that type of mindset where I'm just got, I'm so competitive. Like, I don't yeah. want to go and go. I have to win. It's called, it's called, I think it's called Wembley. We call it Wembley still. And, yeah, um, I remember that. It's Wembley, innit? When the keeper turns yeah. around, chucks it backwards and that. But obviously, I just remember just licking out the, my grand's back garden, just bam, bam, the um, shed. And then the neighbours complaining. It was mad. It was just one of them ones where I, that's where it fully started, this football thing. Mashing up all my new trainers. My dad mum used to buy me. Just mashing them up, not caring. Getting them the first day, mashing them out. Mashing up my whole yeah. grandma's front room. You get it? Like, smashing everything. Like, <laughs> licking down all her things in her, in her house. She's kicking up a mad fuss guy, mad. He gave me, she's licking us down now, but they say the next day we're doing it again. But it was a thing where I just knew football was my thing, sort of thing. Just at school, playing with all the kids. Like, man, I was just always on this competitive thing. And I felt like I was one of the best because I was playing 
I was playing with the old a lot as well, you know. I sat you know, in the sand, like playing with the yeah. old a lot. They used to always, no, nah, come on, you're my team, did it? But that feeling, like, yeah, man, man's gonna play with the big boys, and like, I knew man was good in it. So from there, I think, um, basically, I think, uh, like, there was a scout called Steve. I remember, I'll never forget, I was year six or something like that, or year five. Mm. But he came into the um, school and he was something to do with Crystal Palace. So he's yeah. coming to the school now. Yeah, he's coming to the school and he's basically, which, like, it was like, I think it was after school, after school club used to come and it's all, like, he used to watch us play football, whatever, do a little game, or whatever. And then um, I think he liked, like, three of us. I think it was me, my cousin, and the next guy. But we basically had mm-hmm. to, he told the teachers, yeah, we're interested in this guy. Like, can we talk to their parents or whatever? So man ended up doing that. They spoke to his parents. Obviously, mum said, "Yeah, she's on all that." There was another stage to it. Like, there was another stage to it in Enfield, Lee Valley, where I can't remember what age yeah. I was. It must have been year five, year six. Anyway, now I'm there doing doing well there again. Now, mashing up, scoring bare goals, doing what I have to do. You know what I mean? Working hard, and then mm-hmm. the final stage was actually going to Palace. I can't even remember where the training ground ground is, but I remember going there because the t- the teacher was like, you know. The same coach, because Steve was like, you know what? I want you to go to actual the academy now. Like you've you've yeah. knocked out two stages, it's time to hit academy. But then, two seconds, hold on, please. Yeah, yes, two seconds. Flipping. Yeah, go on, bro. Um, where was that? So two stages got past that now. Take it off, and you can't. Yeah, don't worry yeah. about that, Luke FPG, bro. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, now man's flipping. Um, training ground now I've passed two stages at the training ground now then mm-hmm. I remember going up there and the trainer my mum and I was like to her like oh mum I'm scared now I don't know like, I'm I'm scared I'm not used to this whole academy level and all of this thing mm-hmm. now do you know what I mean and she's like you be you fine just, like just play that like... you feel like sorry for cutting you off innit? but right. I remember you were telling me about this in like different ways as well but do you feel like that kind of perception of what was going on like in terms of like raw now you're up in these levels. Like, what was, like, the mentality shifts that you had to go through during them periods? Because I can imagine. And, yeah, like I said, from our previous conversations, like, mm. the kind of, like, the people around you, the ends that you're coming from, and yeah. the, the mentality that you had. What made you What made you say, like, raw, am I, am I really ready for this when it came to, like, pallets and the academy level? But I, I, I don't think I was ready for it to be honest. It was just my feet were well, just pushing me. Like I was never ready mentally for that. Like I knew I was good at football, but mentally, the people I was around at school, I was misbehaving, getting kicked, clown of the class in primary school, like just doing the madness, trying to make people laugh, getting kicked out, fighting, doing all the madness. But I remember the coach sitting me down at Palace, like, listen, like we're getting reports from your school and like, we'll kick you out. We don't care how good you are and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. They're saying stop getting kicked out of school. Like, you got a two-year contract here, blah, blah, blah. But it was still hard because I had a lot of different people around me. Like, so it was yeah. hard to focus, you know what I mean? Like, but I did, anyway, I ran with it. Anyway, I still went, done my thing, whatever. I went up there. I thought I'll be out. Like, obviously, I shook that. I was like, you know what? I'm not used to these to playing at this level. I've never done it before. So mm, I had a yeah. session. And I remember some players were like, pass the ball, like, da-da-da. and I wasn't being myself. I was just like, I was passing it every chance I got. I was being a right. Like, I wasn't really yeah. showing the nail. Like, in school, where I'm just like, hogging the ball, just taking my non or doing whatever. I was passing, like, as soon as I got the ball, being afraid. I was moving scared. But yeah. eventually, I got used to it. I kept going up there, going up there. And then I just got used to it, to be fair. I made a lot of friends up there, what, friends up till now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The likes of Sean Scannell. He was there at Palace, mm-hmm. me and him were tight. Like, there was a few there was a few players that, like, do you know what I mean? Who I bombed on and actually turned pros and so it was it was a good experience, man. But then eventually they had enough of me. I was there for like a year and a bit. My school, I must have got kicked out of my school, so they sent the report to the coaches and they said, We told you wasn't missing about it. you have to go. Mm-hmm. So that left me in a pickle. I was just like, rah, like I was at Palace, what do I do now? Sort of thing. And then I think I went to Bordeaux Farm after that. Yeah, I mean, so I think that's even the first time I heard your name like ring bells. Like, now I ring around Palace. Obviously, I'm from Palace, in there, yeah, yeah, Not yeah. Like yeah. the baller, like that, but yeah, I've heard your name, innit? And yeah, so growing up, hearing them kind of things there is like, raw. 
And also, if I'm honest, like, kind of how things get about in the ends back in that day, like, because I'm 27, and what, you're like, how old are you again? 29. 29. 29. So, yeah, we're not, yeah. We're not that different in terms of yeah. age. But I remember growing up, we used to have this aspect of, like, raw. Someone from ends might be really, really great at something. But one of the aspects yeah. that we'll normally talk about is, like, the the badness, the the status of the person around, like, what they're doing. We never yeah. used to be able to take it for, like, what it was. Like, raw. this is a really talented person. And they're yeah, not X, Y, Z. They're just on their craft. They're going to be mm. like, one of the best ballers. So I remember like, hearing of your name many times. It's like, yeah, rah, he can go to the top. And our range is different. Yeah, of He's a different kind of player. But then, like, mm. again, like from where we're coming from, we kind of get to perceive these things like a bit differently. And mm. for, for me, I felt like kind of knowing the struggle behind people's journeys, that would be... Yeah able to motivate me in my own kind of craft so because I wasn't a baller I used to come on come and see like my friends who are like at Crystal Palace Academy people that were <laughs> going off to play for Fulham and I just used to think like rah what is the drive behind them lot achieving so much within one field and football's like the yeah. golden the golden career in them like, if you can't be a baller I feel like a lot of men would want to go into something in terms of like maybe it sounds typical, but when you're young and impressionable, you might mm. want to do something like music. You want, might want to, you might have like, yeah. A, yeah, you know what I mean? A feeling for yeah, like easy it money. Probably you been... wanna... nah, there's there's much, it's probably would have been. Yeah, it's true. There's enough angles, but a lot of people I know try to do this music thing, but some man, obviously doing the music thing up to now, like some man get lucky with it or just natural. When you got that natural talent, you bust off sort of thing, you know what I mean? Mm. But it, it wasn't just that. There was distractions like, other things like other badness you wanted to do like you yeah. see man doing certain things and then you want to just get a taste of it and you want to try like to take a phone or do this or do that you just there's so much things around you but you got to just have that discipline to know like i've got a chance here like man's got a chance in life to kind of sort myself yeah. out sort my family out like everything like and football is even music now the music the uk thing is popping off so but Back then, I don't know, man, if it was the same yeah. football. You just heard the likes of, like, the white, you all call these names, Alan Shep, like, you know what I mean? And Premier mm -hmm. League, Thierry Henry. Like, you're like, wow, like, you know what I mean? So, football's never going to die. So, that was like, every, boy, every young boy wants to kick a ball. inspiration, yeah, man. Yeah, like, let's right. kick ball. Like, even if you, you're not that good at it, you'll try to kick ball. Like, you know what I mean? So, for me... I had to retire early from kicking ball. I can't lie. Yeah. When I got kicked out of school, <laughs> it was like it deadened my skill. And also, in centre, when it came to like resources, like I got expelled when I was like 13 um, from school. But when it came to resources in terms of like playing ball, we used to have a few men from Crystal Palace come and like coach us every now and then, maybe like once a week. But apart mm. from that, we have like two footballs within the centre. If one of mm. them goes over, over like the, yes. the gate into it's the field, myth, you can't even, it's a myth. You're not playing mm. football. Same way as like, we didn't have resources, like, might be sharing three maths books between like five, six different youths. Yeah, and like three of them like are gang members or something. And it's like, mm, how it's like, with these kind of situations around you, will you be able yeah. to like, prosper? And I feel like I kind of peaked that idea of mentality from a very young age and we're we're kind of exposed to a, to a lot in end so my thing was like rah how am i going to convert this into a new passion and it's it's so mm. funny that you're saying that rah like how you start to become a baller is like you're smashing up your your yard you're smashing up your grandma's yard my grand's so yard yeah like, going mad in it just going mad i remember like i never used to have a yeah. creative outlet like that so yeah. what i done is it's gonna sound mad weird isn't it but i used to make mad yeah. models like literally mm. because what do you mean have, so models out of like blue tack and clay and stuff okay, like that okay, when okay, i'm like okay. yeah so i used to make yeah. these models and stuff and be like raw might ascribe the story to that situation there and this is when i was very young so like i'd say mm. about six so about like six ten. Yes. Yeah, you remember six. You remember six, yeah? 
Yeah, I remember six. Like, I've got. Bro, I don't think I can really remember six. Like that, bro. And because I was so kind of naughty in school, and I didn't have the outlet for this kind of create creative like kind of mm. juices in it. I needed to challenge it somewhere. So I was literally like yeah. messing up my staircase with blue tack because I'll be sitting there like trying to make models or trying to draw and stuff. And my parents weren't necessarily keen on me exploring things creatively creativity mm. because they know mm. that raw going into the future you're going to need some kind of stability around your passion so yeah, the education course, thing course. it never really it never really caught me like that until too late and i was just trying to write something into existence i didn't necessarily see what everyone else was doing i didn't have like a scope of other like mm. black british writers other other people within this field so I, I kind of started to take inspiration from stories like yours from mm -hmm. people within the like the grime scene from like them early days where i saw someone mm -hmm. doing something and mm -hmm. hearing that they're coming from these situations and i used to apply it myself so mm -hmm. by the time i was like 13 14 years old mm -hmm. i used to literally have this idea that rah it was kind of a bit defeatist it was kind of mm. like the pressure that you're talking about when you went to Palace. But my, my mm. thing was like, well, I'm not on the same kind of standard as everyone else because I've gone through these things and my life is already different from the offset. So mm. what mental changes am I going to need? Even though I didn't think of it in this way, but now I look back on it, I kind of did. I was thinking like, well, what kind of mental changes would I need to, mm. in order to see these things to fruition? And I kind of persisted at it in a way where I was just like, building the skills, building my kind of passion for this to get to a point where I can say, all right, mm. I'm good at this. I'm okay within these different like institutions and fields. And mm. so, yeah, that, that's like um, a kind of, a bit of like my fragmented journey. But the next thing I kind of mm. wanted to move on to is like, oh yeah, no, there's also that other, that other thing that you showed me. You showed me What's that? that video of, you when you were like, I think you were like four years old, saying that you wanted to be on match of the day. Well, you sure was what? match saying what is your match of the day? Yeah, no, you said to me like, right, one of your aspirations as well. Like, no, I must have, I must have said, um, I said, when I'm older, I'm gonna be a footballer. I wanna get be a footballer, da -da 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 -da, and all of that. I think. I don't know yeah, if I said match no. of the day. Though. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, man. I think I showed you. You remember that video? Right. Yeah, that, it was. Later, but yeah, look for it. I think video, it's. It I so think sick. it's the one I'm. I think it's the one I'm talking about. Still, I want to be a footballer. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I remember. That. So it's <laughs> mad. So he, speaking it to into existence is mad like that. Like the, the tongue's the tongue's powerful, bro. Trust it's, me, it's bro. That's why. I, that's why. Now, that's why I tried to talk positive. Mm. Mm. You need. But you need man's that got positive kind of guidance. It's hard though, bro, when things are not what go in your way, like, and yeah. and there's obstacles in your way. Do you understand? But obviously, yeah. you just gotta stay positive and just know that there's gonna be better days. Things are gonna come. Opportunities gonna come. But wh whilst you're just seeing taking enough else, self-inflicted at times, more time. Yeah. It's hard to see it in it, but there's mm -hmm. always gonna be doors or open sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you, well. you gotta speak good, man. There's no point being negative. Like, there's no point. Even though I do it, I go through my spells and I can't lie, have my spells, but mm -hmm. more time I try to stay positive. Yeah, man, that's... You need to, bro, otherwise this will kind of eat you up. And yeah, It'll so eat I you wanted up. to it's long. kind of bring it back to like our, our next point. So I wanted to focus on like the mentality shifts within these kind of situations there because, yeah, as you mm. said, you kind of have to persevere it's like an affirmations thing where you're constantly jabbering at the, the positivity. Like, so after you play for Crystal Palace, after you've like kind of, you said you went back to like, um, no, you went to Broadwater Farm and you kind yeah. of had to rework your way back. So what was like the mentality shifts that you saw within yourself, like during that kind of period? Because I imagine well, that, rah, getting back to, uh, well, yeah, going like down a level in terms of like your football career at an early age, it puts off. Uh, you know what? It, 
obviously when I was at Palace, I was thinking, I remember like, I was always forced to go to church and I was in church all the time and things like this year. Mm-hmm. And I got a chance to just, you know, saying church is a bad thing and all like that because my grandparents and all my family are involved in the church thing, you understand? Know, they're godly. But it was it felt good not to wake up and go to church on a Sunday where I had to do yeah. it was two sessions. Like, man was just football. Then it was just nice to just play football and, do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it was just different. It was different. And obviously, with getting released from there, because we should train twice a week, play on a Sunday or Saturday. I think it was Sunday. But um, obviously, going to a farm now, obviously, I'm thinking, right, like, I know my dad, like, I got, my dad's got people then from there and all the rats that went on. It's just, like, I heard this mad over on the farm, innit? And the wreck and all of that. Like, it was mad. But there was coaching, like, a lot of players... A lot of players from Bordeaux Farm, they got went on bombed on them, went to Arsenal, Juventus, like they had strong links. But yeah, then I went over there, I went over there, I was banging goals, but there was always drive by shootouts on the block, everything like, but mm. I was still going there, training, doing whatever. And um, obviously, I was, I was thinking, right, man's been doing my thing, I've scored so many goals, I'm the highest scorer, like top scorer like two years three years in a row I'm like when's my chance to, to kind of get an academy to take me do you know what I mean I left there yeah and then I think I went to Rumford semi-pro after that doing well I was doing all right doing doing good things for myself then I um mm. I was kind of always just catching cases and doing silly little things sort of thing yeah. to, was taking my mind off well, I can imagine that's guys. like the kickback from the area because I don't think many footballers go through that kind of situation where they're mm. trying to attain like raw the best situation they can with their craft and obviously mm. career and mm. their surroundings like drive-bys like the people around them in, in situations like to do with ends like it's a bit mm. it's very nuts and that's one aspect of the game and I feel like um Kevin George like who's on our team as yeah, well yeah no yeah he, points aspects like a lot within his work like the fact that people come from different backgrounds and when you don't recognize those backgrounds it makes it e- like harder for them to mm. succeed within these kind of settings so i've always kind of had that scope on your career as well like as mm. a young black man as like someone who's interested in football i always kind of look at these series and i even saw in some of the comments like people talking about people like ravel morrison and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Discussions about um, people from these kind of areas before as well, and mm. so I just wanted to ask, like, during that kind of era as well, how do you think? Well, how do you feel, like, from your personal kind of um, opinion? How do you feel the game was like adapting to players like that? Because I feel like in this day and age, we see loads of men from ends, but like the money is different. Yeah, everything's different. Different and, and everything else. I think then, we, like, I think then it was, it's, it was, everything's different now, like, for the youngsters now. I feel like, I won't say I paved the way, but I, I mm. kind of bust on the scene early doors. So all these youngsters now, that like, they can see and see me and be like, you know what, yeah, that's not the way, the way to go. Or the agents can, mm. they will have guidance. They will know what to do and what not to do. Do you know what I mean? And when they can yeah. kind of do it, I was just wrecky. Like, I was just, I always had that mindset, like, I can do what I want. And I'm just going to, yeah. I'm good at football, it's going to last forever. And I can just do what I want, sort of thing. But mm. being around, like, certain people can draw you out or whatever, not, they don't, like, it's not necessarily um, a thing where you, I had to be drawn out. Like, I would draw myself out in a way because I didn't need to follow these lot and do stupid things. But after football, yeah. Maybe I just might think, let me go do this, go do that, for just to just jump on a bandwagon. Basically, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was just yeah. fun at the time, being just youth and being stupid, stupidity kind of thing. And that's so. the thing, like the idea of fun as well is different for different people. Like, I can go three roads down in my area mm. and meet a block, and pff, these people might see like violence or these kind of settings as fun because of the, yeah. the way that their livelihood has just been built around them. And I feel yeah. like when we get to that level of life, people expect you to have such a different mentality already without having to unlearn these, these things. And 
Mm. That was also like kind of the case for me. I think it was very like hard hitting. Once I like reached the point of maturity, I was getting, I was kind of getting out of that zone. I had to go back and do a lot of like mental unlearning in order to just mm. be suitable for these um, kind of fields. Like obviously my my field is like writing and stuff. Now yeah. I like, only really got into this scene probably in the last like three four years, but I have been writing for about like fifteen now, and so mm. like for me when I was like in in center again like I had to like leave that institution with my GCSEs. I've done my GCSEs there, spent like two and a half years there. I went to college and then I was overwhelmed by all of the different people around. It was like such a different mm. contrast for me coming from like these certain pockets and ends. And I thought, right, let me keep to myself, do my thing, I've done my thing. But my awakening call was when I went to university and in mm. a very like wayward kind of sense, that for a lot of people is like moving from your first homegrown club in a sense, you mm. get what I'm saying? So yeah, of course, you're moving to a whole different area. You're then you're meeting people from around the world, not just from around that university. So I met people for the first time from like West London, um, bare people from North London, some mm. people from East London, some people from like psh, Manchester, Liverpool, uh, America, worldwide. Yeah. Isn't it? So once I started to get into these zones and then seeing how other people adapt and their different journeys, I started to realize that, hang on, like where I'm coming from is kind of like a a very very harsh situation there's so many things I have to learn to get the best I can out of this situation otherwise I can lose it all like mm. there's situations where if I reacted the way that I adapted to I could have ruined every opportunity that I had and I think it's a very strong point that you made where you said that oh, so many people kind of look at your journey now and they'll be able mm. to say like, oh, I don't want it to go that route. But I literally see that as a strength. The fact that you can yeah, look course. at your career and say that, well, I want to teach people um, from my journey how mm. they can do things. And it's in the same way, when I go to schools, when I talk to people on a personal level, when I talk to people like me that have come from situations like us, I try to instill in them that mentality that I it took me like, several years to learn it could have been too late but again perseverance and that kind of strength as well isn't it mm. of course you need yeah, that bro. you so, need that you need that you need that, you need that. But, like, you need but that. it's hard to kind of this when you got so much you were drawing you out it's hard bro i'm not gonna like mm. different types of people so it's not and but you can't really blame well, no everything else and so exactly you would say exactly well, I think most people would say like the peak in terms of your career is obviously at Newcastle. So I wanted to talk yeah. a bit about that kind of mental jump. Because again, mm. like in comparison, my mental jump was probably like the book I've done for Murky and, and Stormzy. Like, yeah, that, was big, so that was big that's like a fucking... <laughs> that was <laughs> proper. I remember we were talking. He's talking about yeah. that one there. That's proper. You did. It's, you done your thing, it's, bro. It's, it's weird. Proper. It's like you're doing. You're doing what you can within your your limit, and then suddenly, mm. it's like you're put in a, a spaceship, and you have to you have to go really fast, and you have to adapt really fast. Yeah, but you gotta adapt so, fast, bro. You have to. When it comes, yeah. life comes at you fast, innit? it? So mm. you have to adapt, bro. Adapt to your surroundings, and you have to just make it work. Them chances don't so always like, come. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For real. But I've had a so, bag of them. I can't even lie to you. I've had a bag of chances and I've taken a mick, bro. But mm. you understand, Pete, everyone's different and, and everyone learns at different times. And the penny drops yeah. from people to people at different times. I hear you. And but you grabbed your chances at that, 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 that period alone. Like, yeah. That's why I wanted to work with you from early as well because you've seen it in ways... Obviously, you're the person, but you've seen it in a way where you thought well oh, I can use it because I've seen so many people grow able from them situations there you know what I'm saying mm. but it's again it's a strength to hammer at that and say look this is what I went through and this is what the situation is now and I think 
there's just a lot to learn from that. So what I wanted to speak about next is just about that early period when your like mentality shifts, and I'll also touch upon like the book era for me, and like the things that you kind of had to go through and the things that you kind of had to learn. So what we're talking about from Newcastle, yeah, when I from went like, to Newcastle. Mm. All right, so from when I went to Newcastle, I remember like. The first time I went up there, obviously I signed for them, but I remember I was just always homesick. I didn't even want to be up there, sort of thing. Like, so I was mm-hmm. every opportunity I got. I remember on the train it's like three and a half hours, yeah, to come back down. Yeah. But driving was like five hours. But I used to take train because I wasn't. I didn't even have my license these times. Mm-hmm. Seventeen. But when I was going up there, I was just like, oh, everyone's different, man. I just want to be in London, sort of thing. Like. Uh, I'm up here, don't really know no one. I've got to make friends with these footballers. Like mm. it, it was it wasn't it wasn't easy, innit? Like just moving from home and then just being in the middle of no like you're just in Newcastle now, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was tough, but then eventually I started getting used to it. I started staying up there a few weekends every so often. And then obviously the football was going well, I was banging them in for the reserves, the academy, everything was going well, signing contract after contract. But then once that happened and I got my own place, that's when I started drawing for my cousins to come up, all my people them to come up, just so I had my my thirties, my day ones there with me, that's sort of thing. Sure for your homesickness, isn't it? Yeah, for the homesickness, like, and even and then everything. I just say, yeah, if you look, don't worry about nothing. That man's got you, like, like da, 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 da. so mm-hmm. I could just fill the London, up, bring the London up to Newcastle, sort type of thing. I needed yeah. that type of like that surroundings a bit like even though it's good to mesh with the footballers for a few hours or whatever play football and go home but it was like when my family or my certainties were there we felt better like I felt a bit home like so it was, I brought London to Newcastle sort of thing so that got me through I can't lie my cousin was up there my good friend was up there and then I used to just make other people come up now and again whenever they wanted to yeah come and book mm. your train come whatever da, 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 da. you know what I mean so we could just survive yeah. whatever and I just showed them this town center, showing them around, driving them around. Like it was just, it was, it was fun, man. It was good, like, like it was a good experience, sort of thing. But I needed them. I remember the manager telling me, "Listen, when when I was getting a little, mind a little, um, I was getting into trouble a little bit here and there in yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, rowdy and that. Yeah. yeah, people them was going out, knocking man out. Not me personally, <laughs> but I did get into that. I did get into situations <laughs> like that. Man were yeah. knocking man out. Any like my my people them are protected, overprotective, innit? So anything yeah. around me, like right, no, nah, like, and when drinks in your system, it just gets a bit hectic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a few men got knocked out, but then it'll come back to me because everyone knows who I am, sort of thing, innit? So the manager mm-hmm. was just just on to me, like, listen. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm running out. It's this way you say that is maybe increased. So. Nah, it's true. <laughs> nah, it's real, though. It's real, innit? It's real, though. It's, it's the real, bro. I'm yeah, no, strange. I mean. Real, you're getting the real, innit? So, like I say certain man would not knock people out then it will come back to me I'm getting banned from these clubs now because they got to a stage yeah. where I was in digs but then as I got older I got my own place so I started raving and wanted to see the nightlife and that's why my pe- me and my people were going out and like I said they're overprotective drinks flowing things happen getting banned from clubs energy, like, yeah, man. yeah your friends can't come in no more you can't come in there if you're with your London boys you can't come into clubs there's all of that yeah. it was that for a while and then obviously the manager, Chris Hutton, was like to me, listen, if your friends and your family or whoever's up there, if you don't go down back to London, then mm-hmm. when I'm not going to play you or I'm going to terminate your deal or something. I said, well, terminate it. I remember you, my mum was in the meeting and shit. Yo. I swear yeah. down. I was like, terminate You think they're going back? If they go back, I'm not staying up here. Like, I had that dumb mentality. What do you mean? Like, just, okay, I should have been like, you know what? Cuz, see you later. Uh, mm-hmm. My bedroom, see you later, bro. Like, man, got to take this thing serious. You look, can come out every so often, but it can't be a staying thing. Like, you understand? Yeah. But I was on the roof. That's the thing. That's that's so. People think that's easy, but it's hard. It's like telling you to go to another culture or community and just mm. be like, "Yo, I have to live this way now in every sense mm. of the life." Yeah, it was the mad. Yeah, in the way you respond, and people might be like, "Oh, but." Yeah, but it's worth it in terms of like this footballing lifestyle. But that's kind of how you lose yourself, and you, I feel like you've got to naturally adapt. You've got to obviously yeah. work towards it, but naturally you have to adapt. And 
again, I saw earlier in the com- comments, um, I think it was Maggie, she did say, like, this is why, like, there needs to be an excess of, like, black agents. There needs to be an excess of, like, black attorneys, like, people in and around the game that can mm. look after these people and yeah, be able to point out black where people, these Black people always have to work 20 times harder than anyone else. So it's hard to get into these positions, mm-hmm. do you understand? Mm-hmm. It's tough yeah. for everyone, uh, black people, to get any position. It's hard. It's it's, it's the harsh reality, isn't it? Like mm. it's mad. Like see, Raheem said, talk about, about something the other day about the culture. To... Yeah, I see it. Like, yeah, yeah. The, like black coaches got the same status kind of thing, like, and they and the jobs, same coaching budget, everything, but they they're getting lower end jobs and things like this. But they've got the same status with legendary mm-hmm. statuses and things like that. So. It's mm-hmm. just the harsh reality, isn't it? And obviously now, harsh, man's not even, I'm, not even, I'm not even trying to say, uh, like, obviously, the Black Lives Matter thing, the pro it's, it's important, isn't it? But I'm not, I'm not trying to, mm-hmm. the next club I get, I want no one feeling sorry for me, our oh, Black Lives Matter, Niall, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. we're going to, you, you can get in this way because Black Lives Matter, and we know that. No, bro, I'm, I'm yeah. getting in because of my talent. I'm getting in there because yeah. of my talent. Like, do you understand? Mm-hmm. It's not no, yeah, let's feel sorry for him because Black Lives Matter thing. It's not that, bro. Like, mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter, but it's it's not, I'm not getting in because of that. I'm getting in because man is certainly on the ball. I'm, I can kick yeah. ball. Like, but my behaviour is just a bit, it has been in the past iffy and I understand that. But I'm a grown mm-hmm. man now, so it's time to just focus. Do you understand? But I think, yeah, that's such an important thing you said that, uh, um, to get into certain positions. I remember growing up, one of, like, my, kind of, like, lifelong affirmations was, like, rah, whether it was my dad or my mum or some of the teachers, they were just telling me, like, rah, as a black person, you have to work two times harder than your, like, normal white counterpart in order to kind of succeed. And it's Mm -hmm. that affirmation within me that made me think, like, rah, if I'm in this position now, I've got to do so much better in order to just get a sniff at this chance. And so recently, mm. it's a bit of a tangent, but recently, like, there's mm. been a hashtag called Publishing Paid Me on Twitter. Mm. And this hashtag is of, mm. like, bare different writers worldwide, uh, mostly American mm. and mostly um, some from, like, the UK. They're talking about, like, their deals when it comes to, like, book contracts and that. And this mm. one guy was, like, this one um, middle-aged white guy, his first book deal, he was saying how he got, Eight hundred thousand advance, an eight hundred eight hundred thousand bags advance. For for what? His though? first book. And it was, In the it's advance. just like what the publisher paid them. Yeah, it's just like wow. what the publisher paid them. That's, that's mad. They bro. saw his work was worth, it. and loads of like. Um, and that's his like first black, book. Asian. That's his first book, and there's this book called yeah, the, the Good Immigrant. Respect it, right? Like. Nikesh Shula, and this is a book that right now is campaigning to get schools and stuff because, yeah, it's talking about like immigration, the movement of peoples, and stuff like that. And Nikesh went to Twitter and said that, oh, for that, he basically had to crowd, crowdfund to do that project. So he received zero pounds for doing that book, and that's a book that people are saying now should be put into the curriculum to understand like where we're coming from so in so many different areas of life this mm. is this is a thing that like, we have to work so much harder and one thing that's very fortunate for me is i've i've seen the like mindedness and that's where journeys like yours is very mm. inspirational to me because i've had friends where we've been in situations and it's like oh we could we in this way life could have gone that way if I chose if I chose it to but when we're looking at all the different examples from a whole spread of fields we're mm. there thinking like raw we can't succumb to the same kind of pressures we can't go that way because other people have come and showed that way for us you know what I'm saying and that's what my work is in now I'm trying to kind of bring that back in order to show mm. like raw this is people's livelihoods and this is what we can learn from these situations there. So just to touch on the book like a bit, like I remember yeah. going into it, I was like nervous as fuck. I was there thinking Yeah, like, I can imagine though, bro. I can imagine, bro. I was nervous as fuck. I, I didn't know 
what I was doing. Like, it's like, rah. Stormzy said to me, like, I think almost like four years ago now, he was like, rah, um, I want to work with you in the future. I'm mm. going to keep doing my thing. You keep writing and we'll link up in the future. Are you down? And I said, yeah, I'm on it. I'm down. Yeah, that's all right. He stuck to his, stuck to his he word. Stuck to his word. Man. That's, that's a, why you have to respect, you have to respect that He's also that got this like, vision that we that we have for this kind of work here in it to see why it's necessary to learn from these journeys. So I said, all right, cool. We mm. didn't even know what it was going to be. And then came around, like, start of 2000 and, 2018 and said that, yeah, we're ready to go. We're gonna put together this thing. Met his brand manager, started to talk about like the like mindedness. His brand manager and Penguin, and this is before like Penguin was even like working together. Yeah. I remember you, spent, then, you spoke to me at that Penguin thing before. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like yeah. all of this, when we're when we're involved, I'm there I'm there seeing it as like raw. This could be an extremely big thing for this and like the community and everything. So I need to put in everything I have. But even around them times, I was still coming on the back end of shit to do with ends. Shit that I'm, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm proud of, but that's the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah. even on to do that book, for me, I needed to be able to get that level. It was like my first premiership match. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I've of gone, course, of course, I've of shown course. my talent, and mm. then I'm like, getting all these different forms of praise and I'm thinking well I've never been praised this much I didn't know my talent was this high in terms of mm. being able to showcase it but mm. now that I've seen that I'm gonna run with it and have that confidence so of after course. my first two interviews about the book I was like yeah this is the opportunity for me mm. only I can articulate this it's like a baller saying that only I can get out of these like two or three men who are pressuring me on the ball because I've got mm. that, that skill. So mm. once I start to see things in that way, I started mm. to just say to myself, you know what? I'm going to look at every situation like this. I've been in worse situations before. I've been like mm. surrounded by people who have been like in in gangs before. I've been in situations where we didn't even have a football to kick with. I've been mm. in situations where we didn't have we had to share books because there was no resources. So now that I'm at this top kind of high level, I'm just going to live in respect of it. And granted, bad things kind of happened since, but that's my mentality now. Mm. I've got high confidence. I'm going to go into yeah, everything. Yeah, confidence just, high. Yeah, just do my have thing. To, and have to, have to bro. Yeah, but that's, that's the power this kind of work has instilled within me. So yeah, I think mm. that's where it kind of brings us to it kind of brings us to today and what we want to do in the future of that. And I remember we obviously, like, we linked up through, like, a mutual friend. And immediately I was just thinking, yeah, this is a story that I want to help articulate. Yeah, bigger, 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 bigger up, bigger up, bigger up, right? Yeah, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, bigger up, Jacqueline. Is, um, she's amazing, that like, yeah, incredible. She's proper, she's good, she's a good she's girl. So still. proper, right? She does so much work for Brixton. She works in the political scene as well. Like, shout out to Yeah, I see her working. I see her working. To be a bigger person. So, like, you get me. Meeting, someone, meeting someone like her and then she's talking to me about you, I'm like, yeah, fam, I've always had a scope on, on now mm. Ranger, like, from when I was, mm. from when I was like, very young. And mm. I feel like that's been, like, a kind of running conversation within, I'd say, our kind of era and community where so many, like, young men who are coming from them times, they're just thinking, like, raw. now Ranger was a baller, bro. Like, mm -hmm. I wonder mm -hmm. what he's doing. Like, how come it didn't work out and all this stuff? And then mm -hmm. when we've had our first conversation, I fully understood it. I fully yeah. understood, like, where you're coming from, like, how you perceive shit. And I was just like, yep. Mm -hmm. This is a project this it's not even the, just that I want to do it. It's a project out of necessity. Like, this is necessary information put together. We can work together in order to show you that are coming from these kind of situations, like, what's real. I've seen it with, like, Stormzy's book. I edited another, like, poetry book as well. It's mm. about bringing to fruition these ideas within people to spark something different. And so, yeah, I, I just wanted to talk briefly about 
your future kind of plans with this? Because I know and mm. I believe that we'll get back into football yeah, like, of soon enough. But yeah, God, God using yeah. your story, how do you plan to move forward like that? Well, you know what? Obviously, I'm, I'm 29. Some people are probably like, you know, he's done his, like, his career. He's 29 now. They've got these youngsters coming up. They're gifted. Mm. And that's the truth. There is some youngsters coming up. But like yeah. my talent, it, it's diff- I'm, I'm different. I know that I've, I've still got it. But it's like, it's just opportunities are slim now. And I understand. But I will definitely get back in. Yeah, but if I don't take this chance, I'll be an idiot, sort of thing. Like, cause I, yeah. I feel like it's my last chance, and I'm not going to lie to you. Because mm. there's been clubs sniffing, talking about, and there's been agents like, mm, would you do this, would you do that? Women and mm. Iron, they said, have a think about it, whatever. But I just, it's just what I'm willing to take and how far I'm willing to go. People are saying start yeah. again. But obviously, I know my level. So I'm just waiting, because t- teams are thinking about it, but they're just scared because they see me as a liability. But yeah. even when I'm back into the mix of things, I still want to do like an academy. Like I want to do little things that like just for the for the future because the, you know what? There's so much youngsters coming up, and football's never gonna die. Like I said, so yeah. even if I'd worked with kids who are having troubles at school or little things like kids who are getting kicked out of school, like mm-hmm. there's so many avenues. But I just gotta just because now Rangers are brand no matter what. Like so, I can mm-hmm. I've been in a high place. Like so. It's like I've experienced a lot of things. Had a blast, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah. I just need to, I need to kind of channel into the posit, the positive side of things, sort of thing. You know what I mean? And these youngsters coming up, most of them look up to me, believe it or not. A lot of them, right? This is that now range of the f- footballer. What happened? Like we hear the whole troublemaking thing. Like, but he's a baller, so we just don't understand. Mm-hmm. Even grown people look at me in my eyes and like, but they're like, just don't understand you, sort of thing. Like, I don't mm-hmm. get why you was you was where you was and you just kind of just messed it up but they just don't get me do you understand but they're hearing this in the media oh, he does this he does that front they put me in the front of the paper this this that like yeah. so they're thinking this guy's a monster but they don't understand my journey like do you understand no one knows so it's just so it's like i think like there's there's so many factors within that journey i know we've had this discussion before and there's so many stuff that we had to expand on. And I even learned about not only you, but myself. And I think that will be the power of your story because there's so many men that come from situations just like yours. Mm. And that's why I keep saying that, oh, some, some people might be hearing this and thinking, oh, but how's this a success story? Because they're probably just thinking of the man that raw. So, of the game was receiving like some stupid amount of money but mm. for me success stories be able to come out on the end of it like you said there's yeah. bad there's there's light at the end of the tunnel is there's light there's light at the end of the tunnel there's i remember I and my story like my story a lot my story alone is just it's different do you know understand mm. i get that so i know there's going to be light at the end of the sun there's so many factors bro. That's why and there's people it. you know it's mad people are rooting for me as i know that there's a lot of people yeah. rooting for me they want me to do yeah. good so. like whenever yeah, i've yeah. spoken to people are about you that's that's what it always comes comes back to you like people are rooting for you bro mm. it's mad. this it's mad. is the this is like the, the work the honest good work that it's not done out of like, oh, I'm doing this for PR. This is what you genuinely want to do. Because I know for a fact that, raw coming from these situations, it's easier to dip your hand into the into that badness mm. than it is to dip your hand into the into the good thing. Because the good one, the good approach is literally a very, very long road. And sometimes it's not rewarding. For some people, they're like, raw they do a little aspect here within the community and they're like, well, this isn't, this isn't rewarding enough for man. Mm. I want something else. So they'll revert and go back to what they always know. But yeah, of course. There's so many changes to just be. And there's this one example I was going to use about going back to the school thing. I remember when I was in a, a situation at centre where a teacher said to me, like, well, this is when I'm, I just turned 14. Yeah. He just randomly said to me, like, well, if you get stabbed, mm. make sure you hold the knife in your chest. Or wherever you get stabbed, just hold the knife inside you 
because it will decrease the risk of you like bleeding out. And because I was so desensitized to what is going on, then, yeah. I was like, yeah, cool. Thank you, bro. Like, thank you, sir. Like, you're looking out for me. Mm. And then I'm just there thinking, like, bro, as I've gotten older, I'm thinking, no 14 year old you has to go through these things. They don't. That's At nice 14, you could still essentially probably make it as a baller if you put in the hard work, but no one's telling you that. You can no, make it true. as so many different things. Like, no one's telling you that. Like, one guy I know, his name's Jerome, mm. he also got kicked out of school. He's a biomedical scientist. Mm. He tested the first, like, because he's a biomedical scientist, he tests, like, stool and stuff like that. Mm. The um, scan for, like, diseases and, and all this kind of shit, right? Mm. He tested, like, the first case of COVID-19 within this country, like, him and his laboratory. If he was to speak mm. about his story, the fact that he was kicked out of school and now he's one of, like, the that's scientists. Mad. Yeah, that's mad. So, and, um, it's a mad journey. So yeah, I look at mad, stuff like mad. that and I just think... No one could ever tell me people in our position can't prosper. Yeah, it's it true, bro. Make, it doesn't make any sense. It's just that, right, when people see these things, they want to react in the ways that they know, innit? Mm. But if you really just deep, like, the situations that we're in, there's, there's a lot to unearth. There's a lot of real stories to be uncovered. And that's why I look at yours as a success. Like, I never thought... No, it is, no matter what, it would. No matter what. Name, Mm -hmm. like, mm. I never thought when I'm hearing your name that like, one day we're going to link up on the same agency it wasn't it wasn't a thought yeah, to me cool. but now of course. we could serve as an example for so many different people who are like Ra, I've got kicked out of school I'm in this kind of situation like what am I going to do to get out of it but now we have this interconnected kind of social media all these different things the reach that we have, we can talk to these people and show them different. And that's what I yeah, that's, do. That's the fun like, thing. That's course. That's the, that's the goal, bro. That's the goal. Because, like I say, when I get back into football, I still want to be doing things on the side for the community, like mm -hmm. going to schools, doing talks so people know that like, man's been in this and I've gone down the wrong road at times. Like, I've been distracted, mm -hmm. been around the wrong people, like, but I still got back on it, like, and there's not, no one can stop you. For when you want to, yeah. when you aim for something and you go for something, no one can stop you. Do you know what I mean? The sky's yeah. the limit, bro, when you think about it. So, like, like I say, I, I went to Newcastle, United, Premier League. I was playing in the Premier League. Like, do you understand? And I always had to work out. And that. And you understand that? Like, on the mm. same pitch where he's banged him, enough goals, like, the, the fans are crazy. Like, but I'm thinking, Wow, like, man, actually, I used to watch this match of the day and Thierry Henry with his gloves on, just mat twisting my nut, like, and then man's actually playing against Arsenal now, like, and it's like, what is this? Is this some dream? Like, do you understand? But then mm. you start taking things for granted and you start acting like the money's long, you start bring, doing the madness, you know what I mean? And you start forgetting. Yeah. I actually looked in the mirror. I looked in the mirror when I was making a lot of money and I was like, I'm changing. I didn't like it because I'm, I'm a man with I'm a man who never changes. It doesn't matter what comes to me. I'm just like, I've always been the same. Like, I'm the same now. I wouldn't get big time or nothing, but I saw myself getting big time and I didn't like that now. Like, do you understand? Like, I, I, I yeah. was thinking, no one could, you can't chat to me. Like, you can't chat to me. And then when that was coming out, like, I was like, no, this ain't me. Like, and God slapped me down real quick. So, do you understand? Mm. You've got to be humble. Like, even Anthony Joshua, maybe he has his little lifestyle. Probably does. He's, he, like, he's doing well. He's a successful athlete but he has everyone has their time in it where they want to have the downtime they want to flex or do whatever but he's a humble guy he seems like a humble guy and the way he portrays himself to the media like he's proper like i don't hear no madness in the media about him or anything like that so there's some yeah. athletes who are smart and they do it very well do you know what i mean so I hats so. off to, to yeah. some of these athletes are but yeah, lots yeah, of these guys now it is we're in this very social media kind of era. Like, I feel like with this kind of interconnectivity there, like, it depends how you use your platform and what you want to use it for. And that's why I've got such high respect for people like him. And as we've seen with the Black Lives Matter protests as well, mm -hmm. people like 
Don Baeva, um, Sterling speaking out yesterday. These men who are in positions of power, but they're not changing. They're just yeah. being real to themselves. They're not doing this for like, yeah. any PR opportunities. This is their concern. Yeah. This is their heart. And so yeah. they're essentially jeopardizing things. And it's, as well. it's good. It's, it's, yeah, they're jeopard. They could. Yeah, they could. They're saying what it is because, but you know what? These people are higher up in these things. Yeah, why I rate them mm -hmm. is because. They're doing this. They got a platform, and they're doing this. They're not thinking about what anyone's got to say. They're just saying it with their chest. Mm -hmm. You understand? Which is good because people are people are scared. I've seen certain man come to me and say, "Niall, you have to just play the game. You have to be this guy, like, and do this yeah. to just get through." And, which it makes sense to me when I think about it. If I was done this fake thing and just it wasn't Niall, and I just done mm. everything, which I. I always have regrets on thinking maybe I should have done the fake thing. I just wasn't so real. Yeah. I just just kept done like do you know what I mean? But I just I just said, you know, I'm just gonna be Nile. I wanna enjoy my life and be Nile and hopefully mm -hmm. discipline comes in and da 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 but it just never clicked with me. But now, as I say, as an order, it's different. Man's had time to think. But at that stage there it was just reckless. Do you understand? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but for real. But you have to kinda yeah, you have to Yo. They still went with it and said it with their chest. Yeah. And I have to read it. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I that's what I love about right now as well. This kind of unity or not even to uh, make this a whole kind of like Black Lives Matter kind of situation. But even what you Man. said about sticking true to yourself. If I also, like, played that kind of game, there's, like, a mm. publishing game as well. If I played that game, we wouldn't be talking now. We wouldn't yeah. maybe be working with each other in the future. Like, God mm. like God willing, like, someone else would have been in to be able to help you see stuff to fruition. But it very well could have been that. I could have been working in a, mm. in a different fashion and sold my dreams of kind of down the river. And that's why there's a like-mindedness kind of remaining within these kind of things and um mm. yeah just to say yeah see my um my instagram live is telling me that right there's one minute 45 yeah, seconds sure. remaining so what so i want is to, to have maybe like 10 minutes of questions if anyone's interested in that and then we can probably like yeah wrap it up there yeah, well, if it's one you. minute if it's one minute and thing then you have to come out and come back in yeah you essentially have to do that so um yeah, I'm probably gonna have to end this live here. Yeah, and end it and come back in. And... Alright, then cool. Yeah. Alright, cool. There's too many ballers in there. I just dropped. I've got a few of my baller friends. Bro. Yeah. In the chat, there's too many ballers. Bro. But... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> damn. You, 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 man, stress me out because I've got one of them love. I've got the love for football. Yeah, where I'm like, rah. I don't, I don't disrespect the game in it. So yeah. I won't go around and be like, yeah, yeah I'm sick. I'll be like, raw. if this is a FIFA thing, I'll probably be 40 rated. I'm probably like <laughs> one and a half, half star skills. You know them ones. Safe, bro. <laughs> but yeah, bro. Ooh, right, you know. <laughs> That's dead, bro. bro. <laughs> That's dead, flat, bro. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> oh, safe, bro. Are you even good at FIFA? Uh, bro, I've retired from FIFA. FIFA 20 is a different thing. FIFA 20 is... I feel like That's FIFA cold. 20 is like a... It's for nitty. It's, it's for bro. Nah, man. FIFA 20 is nah, man, my man. ultimate team, man. I saw nah, you do man, that goal, yeah, where you flicked it over your brethren's head. That wasn't me. That you... wasn't me. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. That was him or done that to me, bro. But I wasn't concentrating. Oh, I was at a party. I was at a kid's party. <laughs> <laughs> See, them kind of things there. That's what made me stop playing the game, bro. Man goes on ultimate team and you're getting some raw. Bro, I'll be like on ultimate team. It's my first game. And I'm coming against like, oh, Maradona, Ronaldinho. Living in for Messi, it's like, bro, yeah, this is my mad, first yeah. game. I've got a bronze team. Yeah, it's mad. Them man buy their packs on the line and that, isn't it? They bro, go mad. It's, it. it's yeah, crazy, mad. bro. But yeah, man, I think this would be a great time for probably like 10, 15 minutes or even 20 minutes, hopefully, of yeah, come up, on. Like, entertaining questions. And yeah, man, so anyone's got any questions? 
Let them see what they got. Let's see what people got to say. Let for it and see, like, wow, what's that? You, I think that's a good question. Uh, wait, let me see. If that's that's Shawnee. That's Shawnee. Uh, AC, any... <laughs> what? Yeah, Shawnee Duncan. How do you, mm-hmm. how do you pronounce that? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, all right, cool. One said Ace, Ace Arnie, bro. What is this? All right, cool. You're breaking up. Yeah, so. Can you can hear me? Hear me? Yeah, yeah. You're breaking up, bro. You're breaking up, bro. Oh, Boy, do I believe that? I don't know, man. I, I'm not going to play the race card here. Not, like... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Carry on. Yeah, I'm not going to play the race card, bro. Like, what I did, all these little troubles I was getting into, self-inflicted. Like I said, man's had 20-plus chances, like, so mm-hmm. I'm not going to play the, the skin thing. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. I would, one understand? thing I would like, say about that, though, is there's... Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say it's a race card, but, like, when it is that sheer amount of chances, like, I do hear you saying, so, like, we've discussed this, and you've said, like, rah, a lot of the stuff, like, granted, it was self-inflicted. One thing I would say, though, is mm. growing up, and I did see, like, the media reaction towards, like... Yeah, they... No, you, you know what? Yeah, the media, media did mash me up. They didn't, yeah, they didn't have to rub me out how they did. They kind of... Uh, for something little, they'll put my face in the front a paper. Mm-hmm. They, they'll always just make it dramatic. It's a, it's no a scapegoat. It's a scapegoat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and, true. And, like, when I'm everyone a... sees that, they consume it in a in a different way, whether they're like racist or or, or not, and it's not really up to us. It's already been put out in that way. As a writer, mm. I know how bad mind it is to have them kind of impl- implications there in it. Mm. Like it's it's, bad, it's very very bad mind. It's I would say yeah, the the press is is definitely racist in that sense, and they're even still yeah, doing the it. Like, bro, yeah, they're still doing it. Even mm. Raheem Sterling with the gun on his leg and all of that, mm-hmm. like. It's just, they're out here, man. These media, the media are just ready. They was ready for me. Any little thing, they'll just make it. Mm. Their bad boy strike and our angel does this and that. Like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. They tried it. Man. So imagine imagine them times if you had, like, black writers and stuff within the media who are coming from, like, Wood Green, for example, and they know, mm. like, the environment. And they're in positions, just like what... um. Uh, Maggie was saying about like right, black agents being in these kind of situations. If they're in position, it doesn't even just have to be someone black, but someone from ends, right? And they're in position mm. to be able to look at a story and write something that is like encompassing where you're coming from, mm. explaining why the reactions are like that. It's a different article, it's a different perception. It just needs to be put in the right places. Of course, of course, it's, so, it's yeah, true. Man. It's true, but they would just grab any little thing. Like, but I didn't help myself. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie to you. I didn't help myself, but they will put me in there for anything. What so it didn't matter what it was. It would they'll just say, "Yep, now Rangers crashed his car. He probably done a madness, drink, drink." Like, do you know what I mean? They probably just make it sound mm-hmm. like crazy. So, but I didn't help I myself. You, I can't lie. And the next question is: This is from Ashley Wright. Um, what's next for you now? Would you would love to hear about his ambitions moving forward? Boy, um, man's doing a book thing review with the team, and so th- th- that's what people should look forward to. There's definitely gonna be a book soon. Um, there's obviously, like I said, the coaching, the kids thing. I'm gonna be looking into that with the schools or working with kids who are are kind of having trouble in school. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Or, but the main thing is to just keep fit right now, keep fit and wait for my chance, sort of thing, or kick yeah. doors down, whatever it, whatever it takes. But obviously, I'm not gonna be that guy in the pub saying, Oh, I should have done this and that. Like I say, I'm a brand, no matter what, man's yeah. gonna make it work, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? That's exactly what my cousin said to me the other day. Like, in these situations, you have to remember you're the commodity here, it's yeah. you, like, you can't let anyone dictate. Yeah, you have to go for it. 
100%. but there's, there's enough days where I'm getting fit and I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting fit for what? Mm-hmm. Or am I, like, these teams are saying I'm a liability and all of that, but it's the thing where I'm going to start kicking doors down, bro. For real, for real. I'm telling yeah. you. I want my career in it. So for real, me. man. But like I say, mm-hmm. even so when... Go on. Oh, sorry, no. No, Fiction's mad. Even, as, like I said, even when things are going well for me again and I'm back in the, on the scene, I'm still going to be doing things other than just the football because footballers get loads of time to themselves. Don't ever get it twisted. Train for yeah. two hours and then yeah. you've got the rest of the day free. So I'm going to start doing other things like working with kids, going to schools, like doing little things or whatever it takes mm-hmm. and have the right people around me guiding me because my whole career there's been no guidance. But you know what I mean? But God willing, something will sort of run. Two seconds. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so next question. Do you still have the people in your life that were a detriment to your career? I think it's a bit techy one. I don't really hear from no I don't hear from I don't hear from no one anymore. That's a good question. I don't really hear from no one no more like that. My certain shout now and again. And I, but, I don't hear from no one like that. I keep myself to myself. I've I've known that for a little while now, but obviously I've seen that I don't really hear from certain ones and twos. Not like I care, but it's like I I see it in it. Yeah. Do you understand? But that's life, man. We move, we move, bro, we move. Yeah, man. Like that's that's yeah. nuts, but that's that's what we- as well, that's one. That's one. It's the real, bro. When things are popping and that, ends everyone's up. around you and that, and it. Mm-hmm. When we are popping mm-hmm. and that, everyone's around you. People want to know. People want to taste of that. Like, do you understand that? Because of my heart's yeah. big, I just bring everyone around me, and every Tom, yeah. Dick, and Harry's around me. But you know, when things are a bit, and you don't really see, but then God just shows you. Like, this is all. It's just it's lessons, isn't it? But I know what to do yeah. for the next time. And things that's, are going wrong like, again. No. Yeah. It's like, bro, it's, it's true, but people tried to warn me with it, but I wasn't listening. I'm like, bro, yeah. who's this guy with now? Like, who's this guy with now? Like, and did, 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 bro, just focus on your own thing. Focus on your thing, bro. Like, do you understand? I'm but lucky. Then... I'm very lucky in that sense. I've had like some really good people around me. So that's like, what you my need. Cousin, for example, like he always used to tell me. He always used to just tell me like, raw people won't necessarily be around for that long. Most of the olders I've had kind of told me that as well. And it's like, rah, like you said, mm. people are there for the ride. They're there for the ride. They're Definitely. Like, that's, the, age, that's what, that's the, that's the saying I was looking for. People are there for the ride, bro. And they forget easily. Trust me. But this like, it's life, innit? It's life, bro. You live and you learn, innit? Yeah, not even but, the next question. I, I genuinely want to hear it as well. I'm not even trying to make you emotional or anything but the next question mm. is best memory of playing with Teote um the best memory I remember we had the um FA Cup I think we had the FA Cup game coming up yeah mm-hmm. and that this ain't my best but I just remember this guy's so savage I remember the manager like listen check it stop tackling like that we have an FA Cup for, I can't remember what game cup game or something but he yeah. doesn't care that like, he would just put his he he would put anything that like, I remember the manager had to say okay just you're not training today like you're not training because he just he'll put he would two foot he would two foot you like when there's a cup final the next day and I remember like it was yesterday the manager had to tell him listen just go in for today because the gate tomorrow is important you know what I mean but the mm-hmm. the main memory was when he scored against Arsenal like he scored the win it the 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 fourth goal against Arsenal that was smashing us obviously that I come on done, done, done that was a mad match done well I remember my cousin in the box he was in the box at Newcastle and he was um, I had a missus at the time and she was like to him, you need to calm down in this box. Like, this is the Newcastle fans and the family and that. And he was just kicking off, going mad, like, going sick in there, like, because he supports Arsenal, isn't it? So yeah. when <laughs> when we, when we he scored that last goal, 4-4, four, four, and I remember that it was mad. The atmosphere that night was out of this world. I was world, screaming bro. in my yard. I think those are the times when my Arsenal fully come into fruition, bro. Yeah, it's mad. 
they had a few years where they were just slapping around Liverpool and I just couldn't take it. So every Arsenal loss, even a draw, that was a win for me. Yeah, that was a mad <laughs> game. That game there was mental, bro. R.I.P. Checky, though. Like, that goal was sick. Yeah, left man. foot. Yeah. Yeah, man. Next question. If you had another chance at football, what would you think? I feel like, yeah, this whole kind of chat, you read that. But yeah, I couldn't hear. I couldn't even hear. You. Yeah, you froze. You froze. You froze. Big, like a few bullet points in regards to that. Oh, okay. All right. So I said, if you had on what, another chance on at what? football, what would you do differently? If you had another chance at football, what would you do differently? I probably. And I was going on to say that. I set. I set. Yeah. I'll... Carry on. Go. On. Yeah. Go. On. I said I oh. set ten alarms. My discipline would be different, bro. Like, it would just be on a, a different way, bro. Like, I'd be probably first to training. And I'm not just saying, just to, to say it for the sake of it. Like, man, mm. all the extra bits, like, when I was told to do extras and like, I didn't want to do it, like, I'll just say I'll do it another day. But yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be doing my extras, working on my weakness. Weaknesses. Yeah. I hear you. That, that would be an important thing. The 10 alarm thing actually bangs. It's nah, bear bro, bear. I'm telling you. That snooze thing's dangerous, <laughs> brother. That snooze I, thing's dangerous. I can't lie. Today, I even had, like, a troubled sleep in it. And so, yeah. I had to sleep, like, nap, like, a good two hours before this even started. I was, like, reading and writing last night. So, yeah. I had to set, like, a little five alarm thing and get fresh for this. I'm telling you, bro. Whatever. You need to. You need some <laughs> discipline, bro. You have to have discipline. Mm-hmm. I like to go places. Yeah, man. And that's what I lacked. A lot of that. But, yeah, man. Yeah. Wait, well, who are the shrimpers? Wait, what's shrimpers? South End, South End United. Oh, OK. I, I think this might be the last last question, then. So, um, what was your shrimpers deal? What was... Why was your shrimpers deal terminated? I was gutted when it was. I was a big fan and thought you... thought that was your chance for you. That was my chance. I messed that up. I'm not going to lie. I just started taking things for granted. I, obviously, I had a little my spell in jail. I come out and I missed mm. pre-season. I missed a lot of pre-seasons and I was kind of catching up. But at the same time, I was trying to have fun when I just come out of jail. Like, I was up all night. Yeah. Like, my friends are around all the time. I, I was staying up late. And I and after training, I go to sleep. But then I wake up and I, then I couldn't get back to sleep till mad times in the morning, like freeze, yeah. four. Then I ended up just always snoozing the alarm and turning up madly and then starting games. So that didn't look good to get like, amongst the other players and that. So that kind of messed yeah. me up because it looks like yeah. I'm getting special treatment sort of thing. But yeah, it was just late, really. That was, that was why. That's why I say discipline's key. Like. 100%. And yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. I think the last question I wanted to ask you was I think we even had like a bit of this discussion. Uh, probably last time we linked up and it was like um yeah we were talking about stuff like like depression right mental health like what mm. aspects of mm. that do you think played in your career and what i kind of reasoned then is that from where we're coming from and i think generally i think everyone in life is depressed to an extent and yeah, it course. just depends how you kind of perceive it and I think it's a very it's a very mad thing to be like in ends and like right your peers again stab like you're hearing drive bys you're so concerned about money you're you're acting out of character just to mm. make ends meet like I think that itself is a whole madness but because of where we're coming from we don't perceive it as depression we don't like you know we won't Try to get like a therapist. All of that is yeah. All of that, all the therapist thing. I used to laugh at that here and argue. You need therapy and all of that, but you actually do need it, like to sit down and talk to someone. Because with me, I I I I tend to take a lot of things in and just build, make it build up, sort of thing. Like, do you know what I mean? And even when I haven't been playing football, like. That was my time to have peace, like on the pitch. And I ain't even had a. I just about got a yellow card. I ain't been sent off or nothing like that. That's where I come alive. I take my mind off everything. Like that's where I get my peace on the pitch, sort of thing. Yeah. So that being taken away from me, it it was it does get depressing. Like oh, you're seeing matches every weekend. You knowing that players are training every every day during the week. Like 
you start missing it sort of thing and you're thinking like, oh, am I going to get another chance? Have I shot myself in the foot fully? Is it done? There's so much things you think of, like, but, like, because I, like I always say, I believe in my ability that there's going to be another chance, but it's like, when I see matches on the weekend and that, and I see players what I'm better than playing and it's because of their attitude's good and they're in a position because of that. Like I say, you can have the most amount of talent, but when, you, like, you, your attitude's crap, then you got no chance. Yeah, you have to be the whole package. You need the whole package. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, bro. That's bro, bro. That's what it is. Like, be the whole package and whole package. Think about you you've that. got that mentality. So once you're back into it, it'll be an honest approach from all fronts, bro. God do yeah, it, bro. God do it. But yeah, man, I think this has been. Bro, every time I, I talk to you, it feels like a podcast, to be honest. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. My story's just, mad, bro. There's still, there's still so much left for the book, my brother. So we're ready man. for that. Aye, there's so much to unearth. But yeah, man, people Come are rooting on, for you. We can't wait to, to see what this all brings. And yeah, man, I'm, yeah, I'm just happy, you know. I'm happy that we got of to course, talk bro. about like journeys and touch upon like mentality shifts and I hope everyone can take away something from that. And um, cool. so what I'm going to do now is obviously come to the end of the live. I'm going to host these interviews on my IGTV. So, yeah, people can... Mm. Yeah. People Keep looking back at it, yeah. Whenever. But, yeah, like my, like my bro said, more winning now, fam. More winning. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You already know. Yeah. Right. So, yes, fam. All right. So we're going to end it here. Love G, thank you for joining me. And love, thank my bro. everyone else for joining me, bro. Love, yeah, love man. Take care, bro. Take care. Love. love.